Today on Score Golf TV, we've come to Ottawa, home to politicians and senators, the hockey playing kind. But today, it's all about golf. We're going to show you one of the country's true hidden gems when it comes to golf courses, Rideau View Golf and Country Club. This is Score Golf, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is powered by Volkswagen, from one good drive to another. Now, here's your host, Bob Weeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Score Golf TV. Well, today we are in the nation's capital. However, I promise you, no talk of Stephen Harper or the other wranglings that go on on Parliament Hill. Today, it's all about golf, as it always is here on Score Golf TV. We came here though to introduce you to a true hidden gem golf course in this country, Rideau View Golf Club. And we're gonna show you why this club has so many impressive golfers. In fact, it may have more low handicap golfers than any golf course in the nation. We're gonna take you for a tour around that. We're gonna introduce you to some of the people who make this place tick. Of course, we'll also have all our regular features. We're gonna have some instruction to help your game. We'll have a visit with the technology report for some new gear. And we wanna start things off this week by talking to a few PGA Tour pros. Prospective, meeting today's PGA Tour stars. This week we start with Australian golf star Adam Scott. The Aussie's been one of the tour's hottest players over the past 12 months with a World Golf Championship win and top 10 finishes at the PGA and the Masters. With half the major championships in the books after the US Open wraps up, we wondered what Scott was looking forward to with the rest of the season. I'm just excited to be playing golf. Uh, I haven't played a lot this year, so every time I come out, I feel really fresh and ready to go. I'm looking to put some good results on the board. My best result's been the Masters this year, which uh, I guess is a good thing, but certainly I'd like to build on that and all the big tournaments for the rest of the year. Uh, but for the next couple of months, we just play big tournaments. Every event, the PGA Tour events are big, fields are strong. It's an exciting time for golf right now. Of course, the Open Championship is around the corner this July and will be played at Royal Lytham in St. Anne's. So what's Adam Scott's approach for prepping for that event? You've just got to feel so comfortable on the tee and not feel like you have to refer to a yardage book. You just know where to hit it, like when you're playing your home club that you've played so many times. So that's kind of my same preparation for the Open Championship. I'll go up uh, Wednesday, probably the week before the Open, and just play the Lytham every day. And especially at a Lynx uh, style course uh, like Lytham, you know, the hidden bunkers and everything, you just have to be comfortable, again, standing up there and know where it is without having to look at numbers and yardages, and you just know your way around the course. You've got to get comfortable. A big reason behind Adam Scott's recent success has been the switch he made to the long putter. Since then, his game has taken off. So is the long putter here to stay? Yeah, for right now, the long putter's in, in, in the bag. I've been putting with it about 15 months, and uh, last year I putted great. This year it hasn't quite uh, caught on fire like it had last year, but still consistently on a daily basis, I'm, I make a lot more putts from in close to the hole, and, and that's something that makes me feel a lot more comfortable teeing off every day that I know I'm gonna make some putts. Uh, so it's here to stay for right now. At one point, Scott was ranked as high as number three in the official World Golf Rankings. But just a short year later, he fell out of the top 50 altogether. When he was on top, the media praised him as the next great golfer. But when he fell, he was passed by as a flash in the pan. While the critics were harsh, nobody is harder on Adam Scott than he is himself. I mean, I look at my uh, career and I certainly wouldn't want to start it again from scratch. I think I've achieved a fair bit. I've won a Players and I've won a WGC. I've won a Tour Championship which are big tournaments, uh, they're just not majors, but certainly, uh, you know, when I get in that position, uh, like I was at the Masters last year to win, I believe I can win, there's no doubt about it, but the thing that's held me back is I haven't put myself in that position enough, and uh, that's really what I'm trying to change over the last year and a half or so with the way I prepare and then the way I go about my uh, game at the majors. A similar golfer with huge expectations surrounding his game is Ricky Fowler. So we asked Scott what he thought of the youngster and if the high expectations were fair so early in Fowler's young career. You know, he is a real character of the PGA Tour and probably globally, uh, really. Um, 
for a lot of different reasons. He's, you know, certainly a bit of a style icon, and uh, you know, kid's got a lot of game too. So it, it's just a very tough game, the game of golf, to live up to people's expectations of winning all the time because this is a sport where uh, you don't win very often at all, even in a really successful career. Uh, you don't win a lot. So uh, everyone's got to have a little patience and um, keep supporting him because he's going to do great for sure. At 31, there are still many more years of golf to be played by Adam Scott. And with $26 million in career winnings, clearly he's a player who has what it takes to win anywhere in the world. After this break, we'll take you to the Ottawa Valley to one of the country's hidden gems. Well, when talented golfer Brad Fritsch was looking for a new course to play at, he wanted one that certainly could test his talents. It didn't look very far. He came to Rideau View. Let's show you right now what makes this course so special. Located just south of the nation's capital, Rideau View Golf Club is a spectacular 18-hole course that's a true example of a classic old-style layout. It's recognized as one of Ottawa's top private golf courses for its rural tranquility, condition, and its challenging nature. One of the first characteristics that'll catch your eye is the mature tree-lined setting with rolling terrain and gentle vistas. Perhaps one of the most amazing aspects of the course is its peaceful golf atmosphere as it's tucked away from residential development and far away from the busy streets of the nation's capital. Well, what makes Rita View special is the fact that uh, everyone is here for the golf. The golf course is what attracts people here. They've come to golf and they've come to improve their golf game as well and uh, most importantly they want to have fun doing it. No one takes themselves too seriously and uh, they're all here to help make the club a better place. Well this is a, the, a prototypical player, uh, you know, players club. This is a golf club uh, whereas uh, about half the members regularly shoot under 90 and you've been around the golf course you'll see that it looks rather uh, benign but when you get out there and you start playing to those small greens, the, the thick, uh, very uh, lush rough, it is a, a difficult course to play. So we have half the members breaking 90. We have 25% are single digit indexes and there are over 50 that are under five. The first nine holes were designed by Howard Watson with the second nine coming five years later by Robbie Robinson. Recently, the bunkers were renovated by architect Ian Andrew. Well, the interesting thing about Rideau View, it's a really nice piece of land. It's got a central ridge where the clubhouse is located and everything sort of uh, spirals out from that spot. We've got some great elevation change out here. We've got some spots that are a little bit more uh, understated. And the idea is why flashing up the bunkers, uh, it gave a chance to sort of make a little bit more of an architectural statement, but also, um, to uh, have a little more visual impact on those flatter holes. There's a lot of tuck pin positions and there's a lot of angles in the greens. And actually that's one of the things both architects did very similarly, is they angled the greens. And what we tried to do with the bunkering was emphasize those angles. So that if you wanted to get aggressively into the corners to try and score, you're gonna have to get yourself in good position. There's a lot of fairway bunkers out on those good positions. So you gotta contend with those. But then to, if you can get to that angle, you can now start to attack those pins. Even more impressive than the course itself is the resume of members who call Rideau View home. Aside from the numerous NHLers who play here, perhaps the most notable member is nationwide touring pro Brad Fritsch, who's been a member for most of his playing career and was a club champion over a decade ago. Fritsch loves the classic style course and came here specifically because it's a shot maker's course instead of a bomb and gouge design. Um, they don't have to make this big gargantuan golf course, 7,500 yards, that caters to about you know, half a percent of the golfing population. Um, I think they make golf courses too hard for the average player. I think they can, you know, if you just provide a good mix of par threes and fours, um, you know, where you don't have to hit the same club off every tee and you don't have to hit the same club on every par three, I think the public likes that. And, uh, you know, these new golf courses that pop up around, you know, let's say Toronto, the, the really big ones that you were talking about, uh, I don't see how anyone can get around in, you know, five, five and a half hours. So uh, the enjoyment might be taken out a little bit uh, of the general public. Fritch is one of Canada's top stars in 2012, as he's been on the Nationwide Tour's top 25 bubble all season long. By season's end, those 25 finishers qualify for the PGA Tour in 2013. And with any luck, Rideau View may have its first PGA Tour star by next season. It's easy to see why Fritch and so many other members love playing at Rideau View. The course can play anywhere from 4,600 to 7,000 yards, depending on the tees you're playing from. 
The bunkering work completed by Ian Andrew is attractive to look at and makes hitting greens incredibly challenging, yet fair for all levels of golfers. 13 is definitely one of the harder holes out here. And one of the, 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 the joys is you've really got to um, try to get the ball down there far enough and avoid that fairway bunker, but it's all about that elevated green. Uh, it's a club longer than uh, you think it's going to play. It's into the, the wind as well, predominantly into the wind. And then uh, with the bunkering, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer that sometimes you should have some opportunities to make some birdies and sometimes you just got to flat out hit great shots. It was the moment in the round where we said, okay, we've tightened up the bunkering even though it's a longer hole and it's into the wind. You just got to flat out show that you can hit a great golf shot. 15, when you're sitting 35 feet above any green, uh, the drop shot par three is probably one of the most attractive. Uh, it's got a really, really heavily pitched green from back to front, but it's, um, you know, when you stand up there, if, uh, if you can handle the wind, because it's a spot where the wind's coming into you or quartering into you, which makes it difficult, but it's a chance to uh, hit it tight and try to make a birdie on the way in. And there's a lot of harder holes before that you've got to get through. 18 happens to be my favorite green site in the golf course. And I, I love the elevation that we've, we've got right coming into the, the clubhouse itself. And we put a little bit of extra emphasis in the bunkering. But the trick to 18 is uh, you've got to get yourself in tight enough to hit a, a, a decent short iron. But there's such a big false front in the front you've got to be careful of. And the fact that it pitches so hard from the, the back to the front of the green, you've really got to be careful about being a little too uh, um, strong enough to get it over that false front, but don't get it too far into the green. Otherwise, it's going to be an easy three putt. And I love that as a finishing hole. So it's full of opportunity, but uh, there's an awful lot of sixes and sevens out there once you start to get a little wayward. So I happen to be a big fan of 18 in particular. We'll get back to Reed Review later in the show to talk about their innovative junior program and chat with a Hockey Hall of Famer who's an honorary life member at Reed Review. Well, Rideau View turns out an exceptional number of talented juniors here, and one of the reasons is because they have such a great junior development program led by the professional, Matt Robinson. We decided we'd tap his brain for this week's tip. Swing School, lessons to help you play better golf. Hi, I'm Matt Robinson, Director of Instruction at Rideau View Golf Club. Have you ever had a great ball striking day ruined by a bad day on the greens? Well, I've got a drill for you. I'm out here at Rita View's practice green, and I've got three junior girls going through a drill that we call 40-26. It's a 40-foot putt, followed by a 20-foot putt, followed by a 6-foot putt. And the goal for them is to go through their complete pre-shot routine and two-putt the 40-footer, two-putt the 20-footer, and one-putt the 6-footer. The reward for the girls completing this task is they can go down to the driving range if they choose so, work on their long game, and hopefully give themselves an opportunity to score the next time they get out into the golf course. So it's a great drill to focus on routine and actually score your practice. For more help with your short game, contact your local PGA of Canada professional. When we return, we'll showcase Nick Faldo's latest venture into the world of skincare. For golfers, of course. You know, each week we show you the technology report and most of them revolve around golf clubs or golf balls, but not all the technology in golf surrounds equipment. How about this? This is skincare products promoted by and developed by none other than Sir Nick Faldo himself. That's what we're gonna feature this week as we tell you the story behind this on the technology report. The technology report, a look at the science, research and development of the game. Nick Faldo's latest venture is a set of personal care products built around fighting UV damage and is made for the everyday golfer. The all-in-one carrying case includes six products which are supposed to represent the six majors the former number one golfer in the world won during his incredible playing days. It's got a good hand cream. Um, I love the muscle protect as well. Put that on your neck, especially before and after round in your calves. That sort of, you know, just warm, helps warm them up. Um, what else we got? Good old foot spray when you smelly feet it's always useful when you get home and you know lip balm that sort of so and the idea was six major skin essentials and then we thought well, let's put it in a package because I know what I'm like you know you put it everywhere don't we where's my lip balm it's I know I thought it was on the top of the bag thought the sun cream was there it's not and I know what goals the guys are like when they arrive at a golf club they want a glove balls and oh I haven't got sun cream and naughty so Hopefully it makes sense. So hopefully people, you know, enjoy the product and we will keep developing it. This is just another product for a guy who was one of the best to ever play the game. 
as he continues to thrive in his post-playing career as an on-air CBS analyst, course designer, and entrepreneur. As they say, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. So I mean, I want to keep my body moving, my mind moving. Uh, you know, the golf course days are kind of done because you know, as you move on, I'm twice the age of these youngsters, so fine, very can handle that. And so I'm, I'm, I enjoy this kind of these little business ventures. We've, and you're right, I've got a lot up my sleeve. The design business uh, is pretty good, but obviously the economy, you know, things have slowed down there. We, we, we're thinking about doing photo academies. We've even got uh, ideas to do a uh, photo club residences, we're going to call that. I'm going to partner with the architectural team. We're working on that. What else have I got? Maybe do a new clothing line, all sorts of things. So, you know, I've got. I've got a few irons in the fire that, you know, if I can pull, a, pull the right iron out at the right time, you never know, something, something fun's going to happen. What kind of iron are you going to pull this time? What about the broadcasting? Are you enjoying it as much as playing? Uh, well, that's a different, I enjoy it, I love it, it's my job now, but no, if, it, if they had fairy dust and said you could, like anybody, if you could be a competitor for until you, you know, but you can't. <laughs> as athletes, it goes, it, uh, so, um, yeah, I missed that. I missed. I missed having that the fun or the ability to to play on a Sunday afternoon. That was that was what it was all about for me. If you can play when you're scaring yourself, uh, it was really cool. But no, I love being up in the TV tower. It's kind of it's kind of me right now. I love to rattle on, and uh, as you can tell right now, Nick Faldel's Pro Care Essentials is a neat little product for the typical weekend golfer who's in such a rush to play that sometimes they forget the important stuff needed to protect their skin and bodies. A couple of the leading features at Rideau View Golf Club are its teaching facility, which would rival any similar establishment at any private club anywhere in Canada, and the club's junior programs, which are comprehensive and innovative. The teaching facility has just about every aid, device, bell and whistle to help a player improve and includes a track man, TPI fitness assessment, indoor hitting bay and shot-by-shot -shot analysis. The program, which is where former Team Canada head coach Henry Brunton got his start, is overseen by longtime head professional Paul Sherritt, the only person to win the Score Golf Award as Canada's top head professional on two separate occasions. We are very fortunate to have the, uh, the tools that we have and, and uh, the club has given us uh, complete license to develop our golf programs and teaching programs and fortunately we've done a good job and we've been recognized with them with some nice awards. But we've also been uh, recognized by the parents who bring their children here who really have uh, seen their kids develop a skill for a lifetime sport. I got a chance to see some of Rideau View's top junior girls and their games are impressive. The junior girls program has taken off in recent years and that's because of the efforts of Director of Instruction Matt Robinson, a guy who started playing at Rideau View as a junior member many years ago. Well we have a pretty intense junior program. We've got uh, junior clinics that just introduce kids to the game of golf right up until an annual program. So we have everything from introducing your kids to the game to a 10-month program where kids are competing at national events. We have off-season training. Uh, we focus on the mental aspect of the game. It's, um, you know, it's a full, full committed program. Rideau View is also home to one of Canada's greatest hockey coaches and Hall of Famer, Brian Kilray. You said you told me you were a 30 handicapper and you just shot a 99, so that's a pretty good score. I don't think I want to play it when you're, you're going to shoot like that, but what kind of enjoyment do you get from coming out here to play? I think it's the, the people are around here. Uh, everyone is friendly, uh, we have a great pro, the manager, and, uh, but you walk in and it's, uh, it's a lot of sporting people and um, there's an awful lot of good people and I just enjoy the friendships too. Now you must have played with a lot of hockey players over the years, any of them stand out, any, any really good players among the, the hockey brethren? Well the one that I know that was pretty good was Dougie Wilson, he was almost a, a par golfer. I know that uh, there's others that I'm sure that uh, played better, but Dougie, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of time to play, but when he hit the ball, like it was just mammoth drives, and he just did everything well. He was a good hockey player, and whatever sport he took, he was good in, but he was probably, Adam Creighton played for me uh, quite a while back, and um, he, uh, his dad owned numerous golf courses, and uh, he might have been the best golfer because uh, there was no part of the game he couldn't do. Well, there's no room on the scorecard for pictures, as we know. It's just uh, just the number at the end of the round. Oh yeah, and like it doesn't matter, but we're competitive because uh, with the handicap system, uh, they know what I'm supposed to shoot, and I try to play to my handicap so they they won't call me a sandbagger. <laughs> Great to see you. Oh, thanks very much. I appreciate it. 
Ottawa's Rideau View Golf Club, truly one of Eastern Canada's finest designs. When we return, we'll wrap up another show from Rideau View, but not before we hit the lighter side of golf. Now, the lighter side of golf, brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra, now available in Canada. All right, everybody. Today we're gonna talk about course management, shot selection, and ultimately how to escape from danger. You'll have to excuse all the noise right now, but I've hit it into a really bad spot. I'm long left on 18 South at Angus Glen, and you can see here I'm in amongst the air conditioners. I got a silo up here to the right. I got a blind shot. I've got an 88 yard force carry, 98 to the pin. Anything more than 109 is jail. So when you're in a rough spot like this, first off, bring every club you might possibly need. Too often I see amateurs not giving themselves the right tool for the job. So once we've got our clubs, we've got to take a look at our lie. We've got to analyze what's going on here. I've got a hard wind coming from right to left. That's going to cause the ball to move left as soon as I hit it. I can't start it too far right because I've got the silo here. So I'm going to get my line to the pin, make my club selection, commit to my line, go ahead and hit the shot. Pay attention to those rules we talked about up there. Knowing your yardage, assessing the wind, assessing the elevation change, commit to your shot, and you can make par from anywhere too. Join us next time on Lessons from the Lighter Side of Golf. Week Speaks is brought to you by Bushnell, makers of the Pro 1M and Tour Z6 range finders. You know, as Canadian golf fans, it's very difficult to watch the scores being put up these days by Mike Weir. We see those high 70s and even low 80 rounds, and we cringe a little bit because everyone in Canada who's a golf fan really likes Mike Weir. We like what he's done. He is perhaps the greatest golfer ever to come from this country, but these days, certainly he's going through a rough patch. However, I'm not one of those people who's ready to say that he is done, that he is washed up, that his career is over. If you look at the facts, well, he had elbow surgery just a few months ago. He took seven months off to recover. He's only been back for a short period since that time, and he's trying to relearn the swing, the one that won him the Masters. So, folks, we got to give this guy a little bit of time. If we're having the same conversation a year from now, and he's still shooting those same scores, well, perhaps then there's some credence to it. But Mike Weir is one of the hardest workers in the game. He's going to give it his all to try and get back on top where he once was, and if he does, you can be sure that the nation of golf fans will be right there cheering them on. That's all the time we have for this week on Score Golf TV. Thanks to everybody here in Ottawa and at Rideau View. It's been a wonderful stay. Until next time, folks, we'll see you here on Score Golf TV. Thanks for watching Score Golf on TSN, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is powered by Volkswagen. From one good drive to another, Jack Link's Beef Jerky, Feed Your Wild Side, and Kelowna Tourism. 19 golf courses from easy going to ego shattering. Clothing provided by Callaway Golf Canada.